Greetings gamers, welcome to another Lazy Corn <laughs> Channel video. Today, Pitch Storm, the game where we uh, pitch our own movies. Oh, I thought Custom it was Bitch movie. Storm. Bitch Storm. Was that no, that's another game. Yeah. One person is the executive. That's me. I'm a. You can tell by the time I'm a fancy oh movie God. executive. Yeah. yeah, it's a oh, boss. Oh yeah, you're so. It's a boss so type. Everyone draws uh, either three character or three plot cards. Now, say Mari chooses to draw three character cards. She would then draw one plot card and put it face down. She looks at her three character cards and she goes, okay, I'm gonna pick this one. When I point at her, I go, okay, pitch your movie. She flips them over, she pitches her movie with her character and her plot. I almost forgot the most important part, the, the notes. The executive has three notes drawn at random and uh, at any point during any person's pitch, uh, they could say, stop, that's great, but let's see uh, this during the Civil War. Go. And then they have to like modify that into their pitch. They have to do their best with it because I'm the executive and I say so, or whoever the executive is. But you can only use one note on each person. So I, I use one note on Mari, I can't then make her do something else ridiculous. Now you're wearing the tie. Does that mean we're going to pitch to you you're like this pitch entire to me game? First. No, no, everyone's going to get a chance to be the executive and oh. wear the executive tie. Oh, we're going to wear the tie. Yes. Ooh. So let's start. Everyone choose either character or plot. Draw three of one of them and then one of the other. Don't look at the one you draw. And we should always pitch character and then plot, correct? So character, yeah, character always goes at the top. Uh, so we start with the person to the left. Uh, Wes, pitch me your movie. All right, let's flip it over. A secret agent whose cover has just been blown searches for the cure of a deadly plague. Mm -hmm. So we've got a, a former CIA operative who's searching for the cure to the coronavirus, which in this case was manufactured. Uh -huh. So he is- uh, What is it? Who's playing the CIA operative? Uh, Brad Pitt. Okay. Does he have a love interest? Absolutely. Uh, it's, it? uh, it's one of the scientists from the lab. Uh -huh. uh, she was trying to blow the, the, the cover of this operation. That's okay, this stop. Place. What yes. if we replace the love interest with Obama? We hear he's looking to act. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I think that's absolutely possible. I ship possible. it. Obama this, and Brad? Yeah, this is, yeah. This, this is tw it's 2020. Yes. Um, you know, I, I think that could definitely work. And Obama, being the you know the figure that he is, mm -hmm. he wants to help save the world. He's tried, uh, and I think that right, that would he can bring some great. presidential saving the world Independence Day type power to the scene. Exactly, I love it. So Obama yeah, plays Obama. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. As of course. Brad you, who else would you play? play? Who do you you don't want him to play anyone but Obama? Right. This is an excellent start. I don't know how we're gonna beat this, but Noah. <laughs> All right, get ready for this great film. This is already an Oscar winner, and I know this because I time travel. A divorced dad trying to reconnect with his kids becomes worshipped as gods by a primitive culture. Okay. Now, this movie is an amazing film because it's an action adventure drama. There's a dad played by Joaquin Phoenix, who, oh, okay. uh, and he's Love obviously him. divorced, so he wants to go on a great trip with his children. He brings uh -huh. them to the Amazon. Okay. So we should explore the Amazon. And he's a that. helicopter pilot, so he thinks that he can go anywhere he wants. I think I've seen this movie, actually. The helicopter goes down, they spin, and his kids fly off into the canopy. And he crashes, and now he's got to, you know, find his children again. But he wakes up, a tribe finds him, and believes that he is God. So now he's using the tribe's resources okay, to stay alive I like and this, find his family. But what if we add an invisible talking penguin that only the main character can see? I think I love this idea because it makes a lot of sense as to why he's divorced in the first place. Right. It could be a <laughs> mental health penguin. issue. Yeah, I think yeah. that's very, you know, 2020. Okay. And who do you see voicing it. the penguin? Uh, I think that the penguin should be voiced by The Rock Johnson. Oh, the of Rock course. Oh, of course. Of course. Yeah. Love The Rock. Mm -hmm. I think of a penguin when I see The yeah, Rock. Yeah, he's going to drop the people's flipper. We've got ourselves a horse race here, ladies and gentlemen, because well, these two movies are neck and neck with me. Slow down. Okay. <laughs> 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 All right. Pitch me your movie. All right. So I chose character. Uh -huh. right. And my character is a young samurai on a quest to prove himself. Okay. Ooh. Gets kidnapped by male male malevolent sock puppets. And as you have your samurai slashing through and you- It's a Muppet movie? Yeah, well, well, yeah, but like sock Muppets. So uh. soppets. Uh, as we're calling them for this production. You know what? If we wanted to break the fourth wall, we could actually have him cut one of the strings of the puppets. Okay, so Wait, no, it's a sock puppet. You actually have to cut puppet. the no guy's strings. hand yeah, off. Yeah, you yeah. literally cut the hand off. Which I'm not it's opposed fine. to. Yeah, no. I'm not opposed to. We can okay. do it. We have right. good insurance. I like this idea, but I want to be in it. Make make me the main character. Make you the main yes. character. Yes. So so what, uh, what kind easy. of weapons am I wielding? What uh, kind so of costume do you as, see? As me a in? samurai, obviously you have a flamethrower. Oh, okay. Because, yeah. <laughs> Give me like a cool line to say after I flamethrower uh, the, the puppets. Um, what am I, I saying? You're this saying is me. Okay, so you got your you got your your flamethrower and you're like, uh, 
Who's got hot feet now? Ooh, oh, oh, come on, sucks. come on, who's Joe. got hot feet? It sucks to be you. No, that's too on the nose. Oh, I know. I do like that too. <laughs> but he's kind of doing your job but, uh, for bad, you. Bad guy in the movie, uh, Carl Urban. Carl Urban. Yeah. Ooh. Like it. Why is nobody Japanese in the same? You got to see going. This is a no, wait, because, it's a ne- because it's Netflix, Mark. Uh, uh-huh. Carl Urban was Go. Judge Dredd. Yes. Yes, he was. Okay. Wow. I do like that. Okay, Mark. I Mari, love Carl pitch Urban. Pitch me a movie. Okay, here's your movie. So in my franchise pitch, um, I'm allowed to choose any character that has already been pitched. You know, you really like Carl Urban, so let's go with Carl Urban. That's my guy! Starring Carl Urban. This is about his children. But what is the character? Who is he playing? Oh, oh, you will see. Goes undercover in the world of hip hop. He is a cop that is trying to figure out where his children have gone. His children have uh, become full on Rappers, and he just doesn't understand oh how to get his children back. Why are you saying the word rappers the widest thing I've heard today? Yes. <laughs> this is a this I like film, and I'm mm-hmm, here. Mm-hmm. Who yeah. plays the kids? Uh, one of the kids is, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Zach Efron is one of the children. Oh, and uh, children? the other He's one is... Older than the children. Yeah, well, um, Carl Urban children. is going to be, you know, like a little pepper gray okay. hair. I have, a, I have a note for you, though. You know what's hot right now? Teen pregnancy. Mm. Can we work in one of those somehow? Yes, absolutely, because <laughs> um, Zach Efron oh, has knocked up his girlfriend, Paris Hilton. Uh, she's playing a child too? She's or? playing herself oh, okay. as her 13 year old self, as she always talks about. She's like, oh man, back when I was a teen, look at Party Hilton, so pra- Paris. Oh, wow. ah, you know, so we've got a lot of great pitches here, but I think I know what I need to decide is what are you calling this movie? So secret agent, cure for a deadly plague, while in love with Obama, what are we calling this? The cure of death. Uh, Okay. Death cure. Death, death cure. Okay, let's go over here. A divorced dad who becomes worshiped by gods. Uh, This movie is called Stepfather. (laughs) What are we calling this one over here? Uh, Rising sock, missing son. Like I meant to go rising, rising sun, sun, missing sock, sock, but you go, no, you roll with the punches. Okay. <laughs> rising sun, <laughs> missing sock. Roll with the it's punches. It's a big problem. <laughs> yeah. Samurai's gonna solve the. All right, fair <laughs> enough. Is. Carl Urban going undercover in hip hop culture. It's called hip hop pop. Go beast on him. I go beast. Go deep Hip hop pop. Hip hop pop. Gotta give it to hip hop pop. Hip hop pop. You're greenlit, baby. <laughs> <laughs> You're greenlit. Carl Urban, the hip hop pop. Like it's gonna cost a lot of money to DH thing. Paris Hilton, but That's it's gonna right. be worth it. Thank oh, you, Executive you. West. West Executive? Mm. Yes, I'm an executive now. You may okay. take your notes. I would like to pitch, uh, you, you need to pitch me a movie. I can handle this. I'm here. Okay, okay. moving to the left, West. Don't forget to play your notes. And, oh, uh, I will. Uh, thank you so much for seeing me today, Mr. West. I know that uh, you have a lot of people coming in to pitch, so I'll get right to it. So I've got an amazing film, uh, and it's about an overworked single parent who is the only witness to a mafia killing. Mm. Now, this is a very intense film because the mafia killing is not like any mafia killing you've seen before. It's actually a mafia suicide. So the mafia thinks that possibly this overworked single parent, because she's up so late, might have been the one to kill the the mafia lord who killed himself. But in fact, she didn't. She just witnessed the suicide. And so she's got to run from the mafia as the police are trying to figure out who killed the mafia king. But anyway, the overworked parent is, of course, played by none other than... uh, Pete Buttigieg, and um, <laughs> of course the Is that a real person. Yeah, so he was a presidential candidate. Really? Yeah, because what? Yeah. He's he's out of the running. So what yeah. else? Is yeah, he yeah, yeah. Do? Oh, okay. I really liked all of that, but. Mm-hmm. You know what's really hot right now? Time travel. Mm. Uh, I would like to add in some time travel. Oh my Mm. goodness, this is amazing because an overworked single parent, she's studying at MIT often overnight and she accidentally discovers through one of her uh, research papers time travel and she travels back in time to the 1940s, 1950s when the mafia was, you know, really uh, after the illegal alcohol trade was really getting into a lot of murder um, because I say so. And uh, so she witnesses then the mafia's suicide after traveling back in time. Mm, okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Because she wants to be a scientist. It's very interesting. Thank, um, thank you for taking the notes. And uh, this movie is of course called uh, um, uh, uh, Alone, Traveled, and Scared. It's, it's very artistic. Very I feel like we like could yes. submit that to Sundance. Yes. Thank you. Yes. What I've got for you today is an A-list Hollywood star on the edge of bankruptcy must finish a dangerous supernatural board game to survive. Ooh. Now, and just for my own visualization, can you uh, tell me who the celebrity is? Yes, Carl Urban. 
Are you just going to pitch Carl Urban in everything? Carl Urban should be in every movie and TV show from now till the God end of time. So Carl Urban is not getting as many roles as he should. We didn't get that boy season three. I don't know why season two was great. Uh, Wait, and, and they canceled season three? I'm making stuff up here. I'm, I'm rolling. Improv with me. The villain of the story is actually uh, from this board game, much like the success of Jumanji, we're going to pull from that, Ooh. is a, uh, a, a paranormal pirate that actually comes out of the game uh, and starts uh -huh. hunting <laughs> uh, Carl Urban while he's trying to complete the game. And we shall call this movie um, uh, uh, The Paranormal Pirate. Pandering? I'm not, you know, yeah, I, don't, myself. I don't quite know about this paranormal pirate, but cool, what if the villain was actually just a grumpy old man that just wants his privacy in the sky? <laughs> <laughs> it's just laser corn. So I know this makes sense. This makes perfect sense. Uh, you never suspect the actual villain is Carl Urban's neighbor, who is just a grumpy old man that just wants his privacy until a demon comes out of the supernatural board game and then uh, it's a demonic possession that mm. takes over the neighbor. Mm. Wow. I think I, I would like it wow. better if it were a Scooby-Doo scenario <laughs> where they rip off the mask and it's just a grumpy old guy. <laughs> <laughs> this paranormal oh pirate God. the whole time. Why? It's Dr. Grimsley. Mari, pitch us something. Yeah. All right. I would like to hear your pitch. This movie stars Jennifer Lopez. She is a professor turned adventurer mm and pilots a giant robot to save the world from monsters. She has just discovered uh, brand new uh, Mayan ruins. And in these ruins, there are these creatures from years past. Good thing she's got her mech robot oh, uh, that she has five built. Years ago. <laughs> yeah. No, th that she has built. Uh, and she is a professor of robotics and she needs to use this giant dope ass mech robot. I want to be in this movie. <laughs> you know, I really I really enjoy everything you've been saying, but what if it was everything you said so far was just a flashback before the main story? Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> it's kind of like a Tarantino thing. Uh, oh, okay. and, and, and really okay. it starts with her um, as just an older lady. And she's like telling of all these adventures. And at the end, she's like, how do you think I know all these? It's because I am her. And it ends like a lot that. of Scooby Doo oh, stuff so happening. Isn't that a yeah. Michael Scott thing? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, th this uh, movie will be named um, Mech You Monsters. I'll keep my eye on that one. Uh, next up. So uh, we're going to have the best hacker in the world, played by um, Justin Timberlake. He's already attached. He's great. Did you see Alpha Dog? <laughs> That's a joke, right? He's already <laughs> having attached. And he battles an addiction to prescription drugs. Wow. That's just real life. And uh, yeah, so he's he's um, battling uh, an addiction with allergy medication. You think <laughs> that this relates to you? What? So he's he started taking allergy medication, and then he's. Claritin D. Yeah, yeah, he started yeah. taking more and more, and oh, he's man. just like, I need obsessed that. with breathing. I need that D. That Claritin <laughs> D. Yeah, I was out running, and sometimes I feel like I just can't hack it. So he hacks into his own genome, and he deletes his asthma, making him no longer need uh, the Claritin D, directed by Guy Ritchie. Interesting. Uh, you know, Love what's really just through that. Love Another it. thing that's been really hot right now yes. is World War II. So can we make the opening scene D-Day? Of course. <laughs> So I'm yeah, Claritin D-Day. Thank you for giving me my movie title. Yeah. I don't know why you're helping the you're applause. Welcome. Uh, so yeah, yeah. of course, That's really good. Of course uh, he's in the opening scene of World War II and uh, he hacks into a panzer uh, using uh, using a Morse code telegraph and he's like <laughs> beep, 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 beep. I'm in. When he sees Mecha Hitler, he starts panicking, having an asthma attack, mm. and he shoots the D into his veins. Is that how you... I don't know anything about allergy medication. Shoot. But that starts his battle, the real battle, with prescription drug addiction. Um, well, you know, thank you all for coming into the office today. Um, 
But there's really only one movie that I've you know, really thought that would capture the, at least the current audience. Some of these might be great to you know, sit on a shelf for a little while and come out later, but I'm really liking uh, this Joven guy's movie. Yay! Oh my Carl God. Urban's getting more work! Yeah, <laughs> That's more. two movies for Carl so far. Yeah. Yeah. What? I am now the executive of this hereby film. Wait, you need the tie, you need the tie. Oh, I am no executive. I am now the executive of Movie Land and Hollywood. 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 I am looking for films. Yeah. that will titillate my tit tit toes. Titties. Yes. Titties. my titties. I want titillation, I want action, I want adventure, and I want drama. To Joven first. All right. All right. <clears throat> let me, with a... Oh, let me grab my note cards, of course. How could I forget my notes? All right, so I've got a great script for you. It's about a misunderstood troll living under a bridge. Okay, where they you should wanted, be. You wanted drama, you wanted tears. Oh, we're gonna get to the tears because this misunderstood troll living under a bridge battles an evil possessed book in a bookstore. Uh, and you're probably thinking, <laughs> how does that troll get to the bookstore? It's not easy. Actually, it is easy. Barely an inconvenience. Well, okay then. So, <laughs> what winds up happening is the uh, misunderstood troll, he's He's living in this neighborhood that people walk over the bridge all the time and he's just trying to say hi and they're like, no, be gone, troll, you evil thought. Mm -hmm. And then they, they just, they don't like him, they don't want to be around him. And then finally, he hears rumblings of, of, of danger in the distance. As he leaves his troll uh, hut under the bridge, he runs forward and, and he sees that people are running and screaming through the city and this bright light is emitting from inside of a bookstore. He goes inside of this bookstore when the people are telling him like, don't go in there, there is a possessed I, book. I, I gotta stop you, I gotta stop oh. you. I really love where you're going, but who's gonna voice the talking dog? Can we can we add a talking dog? Oh, you want a talking dog? <laughs> yeah. I, we need, I just, well, I, let me tell you, mm -hmm. I actually have this guy who'd be great as a, as a talking dog. His name's Carl Urban. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be <laughs> phenomenal. This guy's <laughs> going to Bring me back, where's this talking dog fit in? I uh, need So the, the talking dog is, is like, he's- Is that the bookstore? Uh, well, it, because obviously there's a little bit of fantasy to this real world environment. Mm -hmm. And so the, uh, the 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 troll actually gets advice from a dog that would come and visit him. It's like his only friend, mm -hmm. but here's the kicker. The dog, it, its owner, nobody knows the dog can talk. So when the dog is the one that tells the troll they're all in trouble, and then it's, it's the troll that saves the dog's owner when he has to go fight the possessed book. The troll dies in the end. The city cries. Wow, spoilers! Jeez. God. They build a statue for him, and the young boy that used to bully the troll now cries tears. What's the title of the film? <laughs> troll Under Troubled Water. <laughs> troll Over Troubled Water. Troll, troll over, Under. Troll Over Troubled Water. I really like that film. Thank you, Joven, for the pitch. Um, I would say just leave the building now. All right, I would love to hear my next film. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, my job is to make films. <laughs> Are you sure you want to make this film? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> well, it's uh -oh. getting made. Let so me know. No, I have to, we have to hear this. What's up? I okay. exactly what's your greenlit. Mm, a witch living on the edge of town competes in fast and furious illegal street races. <laughs> That's right, this isn't like any other street race you've seen. All the collars are, are electric. They make no noise, making them even more dangerous to pedestrians and anything else on the road because it's silent. Just like the Switch, who's also mute. Uh, played by uh, 2015's biggest meme, Backpack Kid. <laughs> Backpack Kid plays the witch who races. I like this. Keep going. I, uh, I need more. I need more. Okay, yes. The reason why that Backpack Kid, uh, the witch, uh, needs to race is because uh, his, his poor witch lizard is dying of... Uh, uh, cancer. Wow. Uh, uh, and, and hold it there. I, I get electric cars, I see it, but I feel like that might be a little bit too in the future. Can we yes, bring it yes. back a bit? I like the electric. Can we, can we, what if this was a Western, right? Those are hip. Right? Oh, yes, right? a witch in the Western. I love it. Actually, yes. that is dope. Yes, that so is a good uh, name. Yeah, let's, a good name. let's screw the electric cars. We're going with uh, horse drawn carriages. Mm. Uh, you know, we, we, if you can hear the music. Bum -ba -da -bum -ba -da -bum -ba -da bum -ba -da bum -ba -da bum 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 but uh, yes, Backpack Kid uh, is, is racing in his horse-drawn carriage. Uh, this is called uh, Horse-Drawn Cancer. 
Horse <laughs> drawn cancer. Jesus. Well, I love your pitch for the film Horse Drawn Cancer. Mm. I think that it's very relatable, um, and and I think that you should uh, now leave the building. Uh, All right, I'd like to hear the next pitch. Yes, sir. Thank you for thank you for seeing me. Um, I've got a great one for you today. Uh, we have a misunderstood old man, and he is uh, fight, he fights to stop an evil AI. Uh, from destroying humanity. So this misunderstood old man. Is this uh, a robot? What? Yeah, it's something like that. <laughs> it's uh, it, yeah. Except, oh, it's and I'm sorry, and it's at a Denny's. So he fights to stop an evil AI. At first, the AI takes over the fryers, <laughs> and then uh, and this uh, misunderstood old man, of course, played by Danny DeVito, mm. and he's misunderstood uh, because he ordered a Grand Slam breakfast, and they brought him a moons over my hammy. Which are both real Denny's items. <laughs> and, 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 wow. I feel like you've been to Denny's a few yeah. too many times you know, in your and life. And he's like, uh, and he's like, he, he sees what's happening, and he's like, no, this was no ordinary order mishap. This is the work of an evil AI. I'm, I'm loving where you're going. I'm, I'm really loving it. And, and the old man, you know, I see it, but I'm wondering about the <laughs> other characters too. Can we, can we, uh, what, what if every character was a hitman? Man, it's like you read my mind because I was thinking every character. Is a hitman. So this Denny's, like, like you know the the hotel in uh, in what you call it, John Wick. John Wick. That guy also bought a Denny's franchise. The <laughs> <laughs> safe house. Anything, yeah, with gold <laughs> coins. So when uh, the AI <laughs> inevitably attacks, uh, using you know. Uh, <laughs> What else, spatulas <laughs> and whatever else I can find it's, in the it's kitchen. It's automated. Dentist. Yes, it, oh. it is automated. Yes, the automatic uh, fry machine is throwing hot grease on everyone. But an army of hitmen emerges, led by Danny DeVito, uh, <laughs> maybe with a brief cameo from Keanu Reeves, <laughs> to fight off uh, this army of AI that is uh, that is attempting to take over this Denny's and of course all of humanity. And it is called uh, uh, D Denny. Panic. <laughs> Danny Panic! Oh, is that his name? Is that his name? Danny Panic. Uh, I, I will have to say, you know, I loved your pitch. I do have one more coming, but um, you you should wait in the waiting room. Oh, thank you. All right, so I've got a, Danny I've got a really good one for you here. Oh, yes, of course. Uh -huh. wow, so we, so we start mm. off with uh, a shark with a human brain. Wow, mm. I'm already <laughs> sold. <laughs> that tries to scam their way to fame in Hollywood. <laughs> Yes! <laughs> like really the best D &D I want character. this. I want yeah. this so bad. So it was a it was a science experiment. You've seen the movie uh, Deep Blue Sea, right? You mm -hmm. know, they experimented on sharks. Well, they did that, and they took a human brain and one of the scientists, and they put it in there. They get out of the lab, and they, they swim their way all the way to Hollywood to Los Angeles, and they go up on the, the shore, and they start talking to somebody. And they're like, look, the shark's the producer, he says. Wow, he's tries to scam someone. Him, yeah, exactly, he tries to scam his way in, because he knows that the people that own the lab were Hollywood executives. So he's trying to get back at him by uh, scamming his way to fame being this, this talking shark. As the executive, I, I just really want to make sure this movie appeals to everyone. Of course. And past everyone, I want it to appeal to specifically one type of person. We okay, want this movie okay. to do well among the stoners. How will you make this happen? I mean, I have to change I, much. I don't think I'm gonna have to change too much, because like, like, think about it like this. You, you smoke a little bit, and there's a shark talking. Mm -hmm. You think that that's not gonna, that's gonna be super popular. If you wanna go smoke right now and come back, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll lay this all out again. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Your jaw will be on the ground, just like the, the shark eating somebody. What is the title of this film? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's my bad. Um, it's uh, uh, Cannibal Shark. Cannibal shark. So he, wait, he eats other sharks? No, well, he eats people. He's, he's got a he's human, human brain. brain. If you get a human okay. brain, but a shark body, and you eat a human. Wow. And you just cannibalism, yeah. That's yeah, there's deep. a lot layers. of thoughts. That's deep blue sea. There's a lot in that. You know, I really enjoyed that pitch. Um, I think it might have been my favorite out of all of them. But there's one film that's just really stuck with me. Um, and uh, I'm going to try to get the title right, if I remember correctly. I believe it's called um, uh, Troll Down Under. A troll wow. over, but it's a, a troll over. Troll uh, water. Troll over. Troll over. Troll over. Yeah. I am going to green light the film right, Troll right. Over yeah. Troll yeah. Water. I'll wow. come back. Are you wow. Is he wow. just sweeping this game? Okay. It's, it's uh, the executive? Yeah, you are the executive. Okay. Pick your cards. Don't the worry. Carl, baby. Don't worry, man. I got you. I'm gonna go through I got your time. next job. I got a bunch of idiots coming in. They're going to pitch me some stuff. Yes, I know. You're, you're going to see it. You're going to see your name. Uh, and the big lights right there on the signs, you know, Carl, 
Irvin, I got you. Who, who's, who's your best guy, huh? Yes, I'll, don't worry. I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna get you. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Try to keep it organized for you. Yeah, I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make some <laughs> movies! <laughs> yeah! I love it. Who? Who's coming in first, huh? Oh, it's me. Oh, hey, oh, it's you nuts. All right. Oh, yeah. All right, I need you to sell me a movie. I got Carl Urban on the phone, and he needs a job. Okay. So pitch me your movie. Yeah, well, yeah. this one is uh, starring Orlando Bloom as Zeus, King oh. of the Gods. Oh, Orlando Bloom. That's right. Not and Carl Urban, but okay. And he outwits gangsters and cops in a series of death, death-defying car chases. So Zeus is still around. That's right. So in Zeus, modern times. Zeus has has, has, has like come that. back time and time again onto Earth. You don't see a lot of gods becoming humans, but he wants to walk amongst the regular humans. And so in, in, in this one, Zeus, played by Orlando Bloom, is a street racer. Who does Carl Urban play? Carl Urban? Yeah. Carl, Carl Urban is the, uh, he's the kingpin of the gangsters Ooh, that he is constantly come on, come outwitting. Come on. Come on. Uh, Great. There's, there's explosions. All right, but hear me out. I think this needs more memes. Memes. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's going yeah. viral. Yeah, that's memes. right. Yeah, let's go coronavirus on this right. Yeah. Oh yeah, Zeus uh, uh, loves kids memes. Kids love memes. How, how do we implement some memes? Yeah, so Zeus, uh, played by Orlando Bloom, huge Fortnite player. Uh, and oh, you yeah. know, Fortnite. and 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 you think that he's doing these like death-defying yeah. uh, uh, shenanigans in, on the streets? Uh-uh, no, he's he's killing people in Fortnite left and right. Great, love yes. it, love it. Yeah. Great, love it. Great, love it. You want some of this? Great, love it. Next. <laughs> oh my God, wait! I oh wait, what, what's it title. called? What's it called? It's called um, uh, <laughs> Zeus, God of Battle Royale. Ooh, great. Purples. Okay, hold on, hold on. You found the wrong way. Too many people, I'm okay. <laughs> All right, next up. Oh, don't jack me wow, up. Wow, I kind of like how like energetic. <laughs> I really like energetic Joven. Is yeah, this what happens Jesus when you fake Christ. doing drugs? This is yeah. cool. <laughs> He's going to be so oh, tired. He's going to have to nap yeah. after this. Sir, sir, I'm not here to jack you off. I've got a... A star vehicle. Wait, wait, I wasn't here to jack you off either, just to, <laughs> just no to be clear. Here, no one's here to jack you off, sir. I've got a, a star vehicle if for it your gets boy. Me the movie. Uh, Keith Carl. Carl Urban? Keith Urban. Carl Urban, right? Yeah, Carl Urban. Yeah, yeah you love him, work. and he's gonna be playing the world's meanest 10 year old bully. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna, we can, hold, okay, we can hold de age on. him. Hold on. We can de age him. We can bring him. It's the best. I love that you let in with that. And yeah, he <laughs> says he's down. Oh, okay. He can do, he can do yeah, with the age of the world's meanest 10 year old bully and only has one month to complete their bucket list. Oh my this god. This 10 year old bully that Carl Urban is playing, <laughs> this one's hard. <laughs> he has a terminal case of ADD. But, so he has ADD. Terminal. This, this is cool, it is but it terminal. seems a little unrealistic. How, how can we keep it grounded? I don't need a. I don't need Fantasy here. Give me a real <laughs> fucking movie. Well, Give me yes. a grounded movie. I want to win an Oscar. I want like this movie to make ten million dollars and to sweep at the Oscars. Right. Okay. Keep it grounded. Okay. So it's not gonna be killed by ADD. He's gonna be killed by uh, the the Russian mob oh. in one month. Because he's a mean bully, right? And he, yeah. bullied, he bullied the wrong kid. They're like, in a month, you're gone. Oh, <laughs> you I like the wrong and you know, you, you know Carl Urban has Russian mob connections. Yes. I see the connection. Yes, That's so good. we can bring that in. That's so good. there we go. Uh, and he's doing his bucket That's list. Good. Uh -huh. He's doing things like eating 10 uh -huh. ice cream sundaes and like drop kicking a, uh, oh. a chinchilla, which is one of his bucket list items. Chinchilla bucket doing, list. Doing a bunch of heroin. <laughs> uh -huh. Also, one of the, yeah, that's good. What's it called? What's it called? It's uh, it, it is right called uh, oh. bully bucket list. Bully bucket list. Oh, oh it's so good. The alliteration. Oh, the alliteration. That's oh, good. All right, come on. <laughs> I'm starting to drop, man. What else we got? What else we got? Oh, all right, I'll, 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 <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, our stars are confused ghosts okay. that don't know they're dead, and they discover a terrible secret about their own family. Mm. Wow. So what you find out is these confused ghosts thought they died of a deadly disease, but as they roam around the house that used to be theirs, they find out evidence that their parents actually poisoned them to death. Oh, see, I like where you're going. I like where you're going. You can't, you can't stop for a second, man, because someone's gonna try to kill you. Exactly. Someone's always exactly. trying to kill you. Mm -hmm. I know, that's I know. That's right, that's I right. I like it. We need this movie to be super smart, like super okay. 
Come on, you're, you're not, like, mm -hmm. like throw in some math or some shit. Yeah, give me some math or something. They were MIT students. Oh, uh, there it is. Yeah, and then, uh -huh. and, then they, and then they don't know what happened, but they died. And they thought it was something to do with one of their experiments. Uh -huh. So, but yeah. in reality, it was yeah. their parents not wanting their children Sorry, to I surpass thought, oh, them. I hope that's okay. Yeah. They, yeah, they that's wanted great. their, uh, the, the parents didn't want their children to, to surpass uh -huh. them and thought that they were going to be better with their lives, got yeah. jealous, oh, and then jealous. poisoned the oh, whole so family oh, so that it. they could live you're together like, forever. Oh man, you're hitting my insecurities. Like, What's it called? What's uh, it called? It is called Smart Ghosts. Smart Ghosts. Smart Ghosts. Because <laughs> we wanted it smart. Mm -hmm. Yes. We wanted it smart. You guys ever just touch your nose? <laughs> yeah. You ever just touch your nose? Yeah. I so never want to go into an episode of anything like oh, this. You ever just touch your nose? Like. Oh, it's like you, cool think like it's like you think your nose is bigger because it can smell yeah. everything, but Why it's just Why do I feel like I'm itchy nose. now? All right. All right. All right. All right. Come on. Give me an Oscar. I want an Oscar. Oh, you want an Oscar? Want You're going to get an Oscar because uh, this is a film uh, uh, with the character is, of course, an untrained vig vigilante yeah. who tries no, no. to solve a mystery deep under the Pacific Ocean. Oh, oh so uh, look at this. Underwater. Yeah, yeah. So we have uh, we have uh, Carl yeah. Urban, of yeah. course, is playing an untrained yeah. untrained vigilante known as Water Boy. Water and, oh, Boy. Okay. Water Boy. Water Boy. Water Boy. Uh, one night while he's asleep, he hears something in his brain, and it sounds like a message, and it's glug 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 glug. We need your help deep down under. Glug glug. And he knows that this. He speaks fish. Yes. I hear fish too. <laughs> what a great <laughs> coincidence. <laughs> he goes into the Pacific Ocean to see who spoke to him, and of course, he finds none other than a gigantic octopus, which he then has to fight to the death because the mystery is, of course, the giant octopus oh. is uh, none other than him. No, I said... Carl Urban again. Again? Hold twice! Yes. <laughs> Fuck the <laughs> more the Yes, he, yes, he I can do. speak to fish because okay. it turns out uh, he's the, fish? the octopus itself. Okay, what if, I said I need an Oscar. I need mm. an Oscar. You know what wins an Oscar in this industry? What if the character was just adopted by a sinister millionaire. Wow. Uh -huh. Oscar. Yes. Can you smell it? I can, can smell, smell the smell Oscar it? and you're making my yeah. brain go so many more places oh, because places. obviously the untrained vigilante water boy wants to be, you know, a vigilante, uh -huh. but his uh -huh. uh, horrible father yeah. uh, says, all right, you want to yeah. do it, son? Well, you better uh, don't dip a toe in, jump right into the ocean. So he takes him on a yacht and he ties a brick to his foot and he throws him into the ocean. And this untrained vigilante boy played by a, a, a Carl Urban actually turns out to have a superpower. He can breathe underwater, speak to fish. He meets this gigantic octopus who he doesn't fight to the death. With its help, he then oh. goes to land and murders his own millionaire father inheriting the wealth. I just came. What's, what's, what's it called, what's it called, what's it called? The name of this film is of course a uh, uh, Million Dollar Water Boy. Million Dollar Water Boy. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna get, uh, man, this is great. Yeah, we're making a movie. All right, I'm gonna make one of you guys so and famous after this. One of you guys is gonna get, you're gonna get a job, and then it's gonna take on your career, you're gonna get an Oscar, and then you're gonna, you're gonna like, you are bitches on a beach or something. It's so goddamn good. <laughs> oh my god. Is he dead? He's dead. Oh my god, the executive. Uh, get out to the defibrillator. This we is how Wait, did he make a decision? Defib, defib, <laughs> Oh, wow. Get him to really sign nice. any of our contracts. <laughs> Let's just be honest. We have Chipotle here and we're all really hungry. Yeah. <laughs> so Mari has graciously opted to pass her her executive turn also, so that we can go eat Chipotle. Yeah, yeah, yeah we killed we the last executive. Yeah. 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 I don't want beat that. that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining me for this game. Uh, links to all of their channels down below in the description. Please go check it out. Awesome things happening there. And uh, yeah, that's it. We have Chipotle. We're going to literally go eat Chipotle now. Bye. See ya. Hey, hope you enjoyed that. If you're looking for a similar game where we pitch ridiculous products instead of movies, we've got a video like that right over here. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And hey, have you seen uh, our D&D series? If not, why don't you check that out right over here to the left? Okay, see ya.